All right, let's call the meeting to order. It's March 12th, 2014. This is the Board of Public Works. Uh, our <laughs> Board of Public Works. Um, first for your approval, we have the minutes of the February 12th meeting. Public comment. Comment? Public comment. Oh, public comment. I think I had to say you guys did last week or last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Careful. I just want to impress on you that you've got a little over a year to decide whether you're going to keep continuing to go with the birth contract. Okay. It's looking less and less attractive each time they renew it. So you will go in the trash business or go out of the trash business and something's got to, you've got to make a decision. Yeah, and, uh, I think we have a lot of decisions coming up. Thank you. Um, all right. So getting back to February 12th. Uh, make a motion we approve the minutes of February 12th. Second. Any discussion or comments? No. All in favor? Of, you want to take them as a block? No. 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 Okay. So, all right. So, let's, this is a vote to accept the minutes for February 12th. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. Next minutes of February 24th. Second. Comments here. All in favor of approving those minutes as presented? Aye. Aye. I abstain. Great. Next minutes of February 26th. Move approval. Second. I abstain. <laughs> Again, do we have comments? Yep. Corrections? All in favor of accepting those minutes? Aye. Aye. Finally, March 5th. I have some comments. Move approval for the purpose of discussion. Okay. Second. Second. Great. Mike. Yes, I have a question. Mike. So, the two things that caught my eye were I didn't recall the vehicle discussion that shows up twice and maybe I just missed it. And then secondly, um, under wastewater, um, I thought we'd agreed to include the thickener building and the VFD bypass projects. And those aren't, those aren't listed. They are, they're listed under a $700,000 line item. Because I recall, I don't have Oh, there, thank you. Okay. Okay, I Not do see it. I was. Together. Thank yep. you. So then, I don't. If the others, re, if you others recall the discussion of the vehicles, I'll be fine with this. But I, I just didn't recall two hundred thousand dollars in the water and two fifty in wastewater for vehicles. Yeah. New vehicles are in the capital plan. They're in the city's capital, our DPW capital plan. I actually read about the vehicles online, so I can't remember. Yeah. They weren't in the handout. Yeah, they didn't make any notes on it. Yeah. Yeah. I certainly don't remember almost a half, you're saying almost a half a million dollars? That's correct. Well, I don't think they should be in the minutes if we don't recall discussing them. We call the discussion, but... You do? Gary, you were you had your own meeting. I had my own meeting. Did, did your meeting talk about it? I don't have meeting minutes in front of me to recall it. Uh -huh. I did it now. And it wasn't a full meeting because I could not say. Right. I stayed and I picked yeah. up and I got a briefing. I don't recall any discussion. No, no review. You weren't there. Gary was not there at that first meeting on Wednesday. Meeting. Right. This is just the Gary came on Friday. Yeah. Right. And there was no meeting because there was no quorum. Right. Yeah, did review what you had discussed, and so it's possible that what I looked at were the meeting minutes that you prepared for my meeting. I drafted them at that point, okay. for the fresh my mind. I haven't seen the minutes. You and I went over the sheet that you gave me that morning. Mm -hmm. But uh, I will admit that I was on the run, that I was late for something, and I had to head out. So, Mike, would you like to have a discussion maybe at the next meeting about the vehicles? Well, I would like that, yeah. okay. but I also, if none of us are called the discussion, then we should strike it from these minutes, because I don't think they accurately recall <coughs> what we talked about, unless somebody else remembers it. I, I, I can't, I have no notes on that. But I didn't, also didn't catch that. Okay. 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 Although you must have picked it up on the tape. Do you, do you play the tape and go? I didn't. I wasn't at that meeting. That was the one Ned had. What was the morning? Uh, the morning. It's taped. Oh, it is. It's taped. Uh, it was taped. It was taped. 
So why don't we table, Do I table these minutes until we can check the oh, this movies? Okay, so uh, Mike is proposing that we table these minutes. Okay. That's a friendly amendment, I guess, to your, your... Yeah. Okay. All in favor of tabling these minutes? Aye. Aye. And we could talk about the vehicles. Anytime. Sure. I'm going to abstain because I wasn't at that meeting. <laughs> Me too. So I was. So my question anyway. has yeah. to do with the fact that since we have a meeting on Monday and Thursday's on I mean Wednesday and Friday. Yes. Or Thursday and Friday. No, Wednesday and Friday. Wednesday and Friday. 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 Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> that I was just curious how you could write up the minutes from two meetings, but you have already answered that question, which is you didn't consider it formed, so you didn't technically Thursday. take minutes. That's correct. Mm -hmm. so thank you. All right, could I have a motion to take item four out of order so under new business? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 This is uh, very cool. Um, Melinda Shaw came, called me up a month or two ago, and the uh, concept was that we explore the idea of turning one of the crosswalks into multicolored rainbow crosswalk. And, and she encouraged me to go online and look and what just Google rainbow crosswalk and the images are so cool uh, I mean there are just some great pictures out there so I asked Jim if he would start talking with her and we now have the result of that conversation um, do you want to speak for a minute I wonder about the concept and then I can provide a little bit more detail about the well it's a pretty simple concept um, I think Northampton is very diverse and accepting and open and um, you know I ran the Northampton Pride March for 11 years so I wish we had thought of it back then I would have liked to have been the first uh, city in the United States to do it however um, there are several others West Hollywood um, some other uh, areas in California are mostly more progressive, but we could be one of the first on the East Coast. Um, it would be great to be able to do it in the uh, thermoplastic material, which I think would last a lot longer. I'm afraid we're probably going to have to paint it every year with the uh, ice and snow that we get around here. And the wear and tear, especially doing it at the crosswalk that we're talking about right in front of Florence. Um, but I think it will be met. I'm hoping that it will be met enthusiastically by the community. Um, I'm hoping to get it installed before Pride Day. And I have to say that everyone that I brought it up to has been very open and accepting and uh, wonderful to deal with. Um, Jim, you've been great. And you know, let's, I, I've already just got confirmation today that um, they've got a donation for half of the cost of it. So um, I don't think it'll be any problem raising money and hopefully having money in the bank for repainting it when it gets more done. So uh, I did meet with Melinda. We, um, she shared with me her thoughts about the concept of, uh, of painting the crosswalk. We talked about locations. Um, based on our meeting, we did some research on different types of paint to do this. Um, thermoplastic, for a number of reasons, is um, not going to be feasible in this case. Um, but we did find a good epoxy paint that um, should be pretty long lasting and will do the job. And it's fast drying, um, so it'll meet our requirement of trying to get something down. Um, the the Pride Day is m May 3rd, so in order to in order to get the painting done, we don't really have a lot of time. We've got to clean the street. We've got to remove what remains of the uh, the crosswalk. We're talking about the one in front of Florence Market on Main Street to do that one. I think it's a great location for it. Um, we've done a couple of. Um, mock-ups of what it might look like and have been working with Melinda to pick one. Um, she likes this one as do I. Um, you can get a sense of what what that's going to look like if you can see it. Um, we just uh, need to close the loop with Rich Parcelletti, the highway super, about um, the logistics of painting the stripes in this manner. Um, it's a little non-standard, hopefully Ned's on board with it. I haven't had a chance really to talk to him too much about it. but um, Anyway, um, Rich is excited about, about doing it. David Bullitt has been great in terms of researching the paint and making sure that it can happen. Um, a couple of the colors are special order. We need to order them right away. Um, we had a, a discussion with the mayor's office about expending city funds up front so we can at least place the order in advance of the fundraising. Well, it sounds like the fundraising is off to a, uh, a pretty quick start in that regard. So I'm hoping as early as maybe tomorrow we'll be able to place the order for the paint. 
I um, wanted to make the board aware of it. Um, the secretary was obviously already aware of it, but wanted to let the board know that we're working to to make this happen, um, hopefully by May 3rd. So um, okay. that's the story. Is it wrong? Just to summarize, there'll be donations that you are bringing together. We will buy the paint. We're not, do we have an estimated amount of money? Will we be doing half of it or whatever is not being raised? We provide our labor. Sure. We, so um, it's our street, so we figured we would provide the labor um, in order to do the, uh, the, the striping. We provided an estimate of about $1,700 to, to do the, uh, to purchase the paint to do the, uh, to do the crosswalk. So um, we're actually going to confirm with this little, with this little change in the plan, we're just confirming quantities tomorrow for that, just to make sure the number of gallons we thought we need is the right number. If there's some difference there, I'll let Melinda know, but I think we're pretty, pretty close in terms of what the cost would be. And this is a pretty, I'm, I'm happy with the paint that we picked, um, and I think it's going to actually, I don't want to get too overboard here, but I looked at some of the photos on, on the internet. This thing is going to be great when it's done. We're going to have one of the best looking crosswalks of the ones I've seen on the internet. So, we're excited about it. it it's worth Googling. It's really remarkable. Well, some of them. Yeah. In Europe, there are a bunch. It's amazing. I'm still trying to understand. So, if, if, if we're, we're buying the paint for $1,700, and it's our labor, but then if they have donations, to what extent will their donations uh, minimize the uh, paint cost? We would accept, the city would accept the gift of $1,700 for the paint. Okay. And that would go into a gift account that we have okay. that would account for the cost of the materials that we have to purchase. So, if that way it would be available if we needed to repaint them. Here? I'm just curious, are the, uh, presumably their uh, two foot wide stripes, four feet on center, is that the idea? There is a detail guy. Fortunately, David Lord has given me this. Uh, well, from where I sit, that's what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so the real question, the real the question. Three, the, the, three, the, the stripes are three feet by 16 feet across and three feet apart. That, that's the spacing. So three feet, six Ooh. feet on center. They're three feet wide? Three feet wide, Wow. wow. 16 feet across, three feet apart. It's set of two and two. That's that's yeah. that's so that's, that's wider than So my, my other question was yes. how long you said 16 feet. Right. That's, that's good. That's okay. like it, that. it's, yeah. They just they show up better. The longer they are, that's right. So they show up it, yes. So typical crosswalks are a white and road and white and road, right? Yes, that's correct. So this is going to be colored in road and colored in road, and maybe wider but fewer stripes. Yes. Is that so we have to buy fewer colors? No, no. so that the, the spectrum is not repeated. Oh, there aren't enough colors right. to have. We right. can't get it, light there violet. There are seven violet. colors <laughs> in the traditional rainbow plan. Yeah. Right. So be 14. Roy G. Biff. Roy G. Biff. Red, Red orange, yellow, yellow indigo. green, blue, indigo, violet. Yeah, we're living out in the United States. <laughs> it's, it's or one of the purples is used, not both yeah. of them. It's illegal if somebody gets hit, if somebody hits somebody in that car thing. It is legal. I don't know whether some state standard for color. I can't imagine. Go around the communities and everyone has a little different scheme. Go in front of Williston School, they have a different scheme. East Hampton has a different scheme than Northampton scheme. The two response last year did the Fish stuff. Right, on the side there are parallel lines or perpendicular lines. So do you need, this is informational or do you? It's informational. I don't think a board vote is required. I don't think board's vote, but I think the acceptance that this is something that we would like to do, sure. your department would, and your support would be great to have. I would really support this strong. Can I ask one more question? Yes, of course. Well, any uh, discussion with the, the bid? Any involvement or discussion with the bid? Don't well, I haven't reached out. I was going to reach out once I got approval to them, the Chamber, um, Northampton Pride, the LGBT Coalition already knows that I'm going to do it. Um, mm -hmm. But mostly I wanted to reach out to them to have them um, you know, link up with us for our fundraising efforts. But um, as, far as, as far as who is the ultimate decider, I don't really know that. I think we are. It's our street. It is. Um, I also suggest that it be brought to the Transportation Parking Commission, so they kept in the loop. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of keeping. Yeah. 
Melinda and I have talked about her, her ensuring that she's getting everyone excited about it. You talked to the mayor. I sent them in. Uh, I haven't gotten a response, but Jim's already talked to them, so mm -hmm. obviously yeah. they know that. Yeah. I actually tagged him in a crosswatch picture about a year ago when I first saw it. I said, this would be great to get. Yeah. So mm -hmm. hopefully uh, they're excited. Too. Mm -hmm. So I moved that the, uh, we have a statement of the Board of Public Works endorsing the Rainbow Coalition project. Second. Any further discussion? So a yes vote expresses our enthusiasm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. 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 Thank, Thank you, you very much. Good. Yeah, have a good night. Thanks Carry for coming. On. And now the more excitement. Yeah. Okay, uh, now we have a request for, for permission to occupy Pulaski Park Sunday, April 13th, between 9.15 and 10, for the first churches of Northampton. First church of Northampton. First Churches, Edwards Church, and St. John's Episcopal. No, I just was noticing there's no oh. S. It is the first, first church, church of Northampton. It is. It's not churches. As an officer of yeah. the church, it's first. It's the first Church of Christ and the Amer uh, the First Baptist Church of Northampton, a combined congregation known as the First Churches. So this should be First Churches. First Churches, because that's commonly referred yeah. to publicly. Edwards and St. John's Episcopal to gather for a liturgy of the Palms to celebrate Palm Sunday. I remind myself as an officer of the church in this discussion. Okay. <laughs> Do we have all the usual? We have everything in order on this, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, can I have a motion to approve this request? Uh, I move that we uh, approve the request for permission to occupy Pulaski Park by the First Churches of Northampton Edwards Church and St. John's Episcopal Church. Does it garner a second? Second. Second. Further discussion? All in favor of granting the request? Aye. Aye. Excellent. So, how does you put that in the minutes somehow? NJ's remanded. Uh, two, change order number one to contract 107 14 for the unregulated contaminant monitoring to water system, or of water systems to pace analytical in the amount of $1,550. And this is paid for out of the water enterprise fund. Approval. So this change order is for um, a 25% increase in the cost due to the first round that we took became contaminated and so we had to do a retest. So that's what this is for is to cover uh, the retesting and um, finish the project. Uh, yeah, how did, yeah. Uh, the email says, unfortunately, one round of samples became contaminated through either operating collection or during shipping and test results, which re triggered repeat sampling. Why are we responsible for that, B? Well, it says either operator collection, which would be us, or during shipping and test results. It could be them. Any chance we can get them to split? We can ask. I just don't know what this. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's probably going like this with each other. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Do we, do we want to move it as a split? No, I don't think we do. Because the samples, I don't know the specifics of this, but the, the samples have to be delivered to, a lab, to the lab in a condition such that they can analyze them. Either it would have been operator error in our sampling uh, and, and securing the caps on the bottles, or somehow they would have, they could have got jostled in the transport because we, maybe we improperly packaged them or something happened during transport to compromise the sample. So I think what happened was by the time the sample arrives at the lab, somehow it was compromised so they couldn't analyze it. Any one of those things would not have been the laboratory's responsibility, it would have been ours. Ah, okay. Yep. Thank you, Jim. So do we have a motion to approve this change order on the table? Okay, any further discussion? All in favor of approving the change order? Aye. 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 Great. Uh, claims Committee 8 King. Um, this regards to sewer block up on King Avenue. Do we have, we we have something on the 26th already? We do, okay. Yeah. We have very few road public yeah. hearing. There'll have to be in April, April 9th. 
So have to be April 9. That's what do we need 15 minutes? Usual? Yeah, this one's pretty straightforward. So could you meet April 9th at uh, 515? Yeah. Okay, so we'll do it April 9th. Oh, I'm just curious, what the plane is for? Uh, sewer, sewer overflow in this the basement? sewer backup. All right, so that, that's good. Uh, next contract for flow meter into Kleinfelder in the amount of $38,800. And this will be paid for out of the sewer enterprise fund. Second. Asking that this contract be tabled momentarily. Um, I've been <coughs> discussing. Um, I've been discussing a scope of work with clients, but we're not in complete agreement with them in terms of the, the scope and fee for the meter uh, that we're looking to. Do. So, um, the thirty-eight thousand eight hundred was the first proposal I had with them, and I'm still. I'm still going back and forth, so we don't have the final proposal for approval. Okay. I'm just curious what we're metering. What, I'm, what I'd like to do is come up with a metering scheme for manholes around the, uh, the wastewater plant because um, we don't have the ability right now to monitor the peak flows, peak wastewater flows into the wastewater plant. So when we have a lot of inflow of, of rainwater when it rains. And our estimate, well, at about 22 million yeah. gallons a day, um, our, we can no longer measure the flows into the plant because it exceeds the capacity of a flow meter. So it's some number that's a lot greater than that, but we don't actually know what the number is. And the ramifications of not knowing the number is that client builder then needs to make an assumption of what the peak flow into the plant is as they look at options in the comprehensive wastewater management plan for sizing some plant components for peak flow. So you're a little blind by not knowing this number. So my idea was to go to the manholes that lead into the plant to be able to have a monitoring of the flows from those and, and add them up so we have some reasonable estimate of what the what that flow number is. My concern is that if 35 million, which is sort of a guess, is not uh, in the neighborhood of where it needs to be, there's sort of a whole series of things that that impacts. And that may be fine in planning, but I wish I knew a little bit better what that would be. I'm not sure I want to spend 38 grand finding out what that number is, and I don't think we need to spend 38 grand to find out what that number is. I'm hoping the number might be a third of what that up to 38. So I'm still working on that with them. Jim, can we determine from that? I mean, we know there's infiltration on the whole William Street line. Uh, the chairman of the Board of Public Works used to bring that up every meeting about the. Uh, 15 years ago, about a month. What's happening? What's happening? It came up every meeting. And I think that issue is somewhat dormant at this point. But could we identify where the biggest problems are? Could yeah. we separate William Street from, say, the South Street area, yep. from Florence? Yep. King Street. Yeah, a lot of info coming yeah. out. King Street, yep. downtown area. Right. Uh, a lot of info there. And part of the Part of the um, things that we'll be discussing in the, in the near future is how do we choose to invest the money that we have in either reducing inflow into the collection system or do you upsize processes at the wastewater plant or do you try to reduce inflow first and then go back to the plant? So because there's this interrelationship between the amount of sewage that you have to treat and the ability to get inflow out of the collection system, um, you need to figure out how you want to spend your money. Some of these inflow projects, it sounds easy, you know, you just get the rainwater out of there, but I think when you start looking at King Street and some of the problems, these could be projects worth millions of dollars to get that rainwater out of the sewer system in the King Street and downtown area, which was one of the reasons why it wasn't done years ago. I think when the city built separate sewers, separating some of these things would be extremely expensive and complex. Um, so the inflow is pretty clearly defined in the Kleinfelder report that they stick with. And, uh, and it King, it's not in King Street, but it's parallel to King Street. Right. Right. It is. And, it, and it's, you know, I don't think you could do it for you know, $10 million. It would be. It's a super those, major. Yes. But I think it should be done first. 
I mean, I think it's foolish to upsize the plant for something we want, we want to get rid of and will get rid of. It's clearly a balance. Um, if it's going to cost you 10 million or 20 million or whatever the number is to get a lot of the inflow out, then you might think twice about upsizing the pump at the treatment plant or something else. But there is a, I think there's a tipping point in interrelationship between collection and treatment in the monies that we have and how we want to invest in them and how you, you know, how you would go about it. Um, it's also tricky because the plant is so old, we need to start the process of up, doing some upgrades there. But if we try to hold off for a period of years to reduce the inflow in order to take on some of these other big um, collection projects in the sewer side, <coughs> then the plant sort of lags behind. So again, there are things that need to be, multiple objectives that need to be weighed. Um, so it's a lot of money and a lot of things to consider. All right, so uh, kind of motion to table this contract. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor of tabling? Aye. 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 Great. Uh, change order number four to contract 204-13 for the wastewater treatment plant testing protocol to Kleinfelder in the amount of $5,900. This is part of the sewer enterprise. Move approval. Second. So this work was done for extra services provided to the department um, at our request for uh, this particular project, which was the electrical testing of the backup generator uh, down at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, the first part of it was that we started off with looking at hiring Elm, Elm Electric Direct on this because we thought the threshold dollar would be low enough. We wouldn't have to go out to bid. We ended up having to go out to bid with this, so we had to pay them or look at paying them for central register bid advertisement, uh, legal bid advertisements for uh, publication of local papers, and actually putting together bid documents for bidders to respond to. Another part of this was that during the testing work, we found out that the main breaker in MCC2 was defective and required a replacement for it. And they provided some engineering assistance for that, and including the review of submittals for the breaker replacement. And the last part of it, uh, the change order had to do with, uh, once we realized that the generator failed the load bank test, we had to uh, basically put out to procurement the rental for the long-term generator and they included that work as part of this project, but it was never part of the scope of services. So if you remember, we put out, we rented a generator for a short period of time, and then we ended up putting out a bid for a long-term rental, and that's what this is covering. That is a bid documents for the long-term rental. So that's what this change order is about. Any questions for me? <coughs> All in favor of approving this change order? Aye. 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 Great. Change order number two to contract 295-13 for the water main improvements to Tate and Howard in the amount of $2,100. This is water enterprise work. Second. We're contract with Tate and Howard to do some water line replacement design work on Florence Road, Pine, Pine Street. And, uh, <coughs> we had decided to ask them to do a, 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 another drawing to do a water line replacement on Riverbank Road. Um, we have an old um, asbestos cement water main on Riverbank Road that has a tendency of breaking very frequently. Um, so we wanted to add this section of design to the water line project that we're going to have out to bid here shortly. Um, the fee for $2,160 was to basically prepare um, the design plan necessary to replace that water main. How many feet of water main would that be? I think it's about 800. Oh. Any questions about this? Oh, no, I'm lying. I'm lying. 450. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Back check. Uh, <laughs> all right. All in favor of approving this change order? All right. Aye. Great. Uh, old business. First, we have the stormwater and flood control update. Um, I think you all know that. City Council approved the ordinance unanimously. Um, they made a first vote. First, first vote. Yeah. Uh, there was some last minute concern because the city solicitor identified some fairly fundamental concepts in the original plan that were not legal. For example, putting a cap on it, not legal. 
having the city council approve it, not legal. Um, but he explained, he, first of all, he, he took the responsibility for having picked this up late in the game. Um, and he explained it thoroughly enough that everyone agreed, yeah, that makes sense. You know, okay. So it, uh, I, was, I was very pleased it passed unanimously. And um, I'm very hopeful it will pass on the second reading also. Uh, Jim has started working on budgets. Actually, Jim's been working on them for a while now. Um, and I hope at our next meeting we'll have a chance to look at storm potential stormwater budget and take a look at some of the big pieces that kind of cross the border into policy as opposed to simply marshalling the men and the machinery. And the staff and Yeah. And, uh, right. Exactly. Thank you for that. Uh, Jim, anything? Uh, no, I think the only thing I would add is uh, the amendment that uh, Councilor O'Donnell proposed, which was to add a fourth tier um, to the residential oh, yeah, yeah. system. Right. So that yeah. was uh, something. Uh, Councilor O'Donnell is a, is a man who appreciates intricacies of numbers. Um, he spent a lot of time understanding the basis for the fees and the impacts of changing things and, and that sort of thing. So he, he spent a fair amount of time going through and came up with a, a proposal that was agreed to by everybody at the out of fourth tier on the residential class. So um, that was one change uh, that, that went through. And I think we all agreed it was an improvement. It was a good one. Yep. Not, it didn't really change the bottom line that much. It doesn't change the bottom line at all. Yeah. It's revenue neutral. So, yeah. Yeah. so that's, I think we're good on that. Um, next, the reuse committee and reuse center discussion headed by Roe, I believe. Okay. I'm not headed. I'm just a board Just an observer. Just an observer. Um, Lots of different issues here. First of all, as you all remember, a couple weeks ago, we were talking to Ned and talking to the board about <clears throat> the reuse center, and we realized that the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund was going to be short by about $60,000 this year and over $100,000 maybe next year. And Ned said that he would go and talk to the mayor about seeing if there was funding coming from uh, the general fund to help us with some of the projects or to to uh, uh, make to plug the holes in the, um, in the losses. That um, and I'm just remind me the loss, <clears throat> the sixty thousand dollar loss this year was paying the uh, recycling coordinator at half time for that. I just want to say that's a loss, that's a savings that we're only doing at half time. Right, but I mean, it was still, that was uh, part of the $60,000 loss was that I did assume a half time coordinator. We would have incurred more costs right. if we had had a full time coordinator. Right. 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 So, um, so, meanwhile, I just wanted to bring to the board, so that's just sort of laying the groundwork of what we talked about. I just wanted to bring to the board the work of the reuse committee, and, and MJ has also worked on it. We have been working with the concept of reuse and a reuse center since the fall of 2009, I believe, per recommendation from the board. And so I think there were, there's been a lot, and part of this came out of the solid waste um, may, mayoral um, uh, committee in the uh, spring of 2008, and um, and there was strong endorsement of the possible reuse center, which was which a lot of people agreed to. So reuse center, one topic. Um, there was a thought of like doing it at the transfer station. The Department of Public Works wasn't so happy about that additional traffic. The, there was a, um, a uh, portion of one of the barns that we looked at and MJ was part of that group and, um, and it was, we would just need a lot of repair. And there was a thought that if the, the state funds 
below the transfer station is some state land that Mayor Higgins or the then Mayor Higgins had hoped that we would take over, but that wasn't ever going to happen. So the commitment toward a reuse center was not looking so good because there was no location. And Jay flirted with the idea of a community center, but mayor, the mayor wanted to sell that and did subsequently. So, but even so, over the years, there have been, there has built up a very loyal, industrious reuse committee. And then in the last uh, year, Susan Waite has come on as the part-time recycling coordinator and really done an outstanding job in many ways. She's, I can't speak to her work in her office, but she's put a lot together for the committee. She's organized it. She's created governance. She's helped continue. The, uh, Karen had started uh, a tradition of events, and those events um, <clears throat> are now going to be in their third year, and I'm, I'm really happy about that because once you start creating that many events, you get a community expectation, and you also get community response. It's very strong. Uh, one early member, Diane of the committee, um, created a Facebook page, which has been, you know, depending on if there's going to be a, uh, an event or not, has been used by the community and built interest. I'm just going to quickly go through the events for 2014. In March, in March 26th, uh, a uh, member of the committee is working with the NEA adult, adult spelling bee uh, to make sure that there's no um, waste from that event. April 12th is pellet bags, um, foam, recycling, textiles, medical durables like wheelchairs and shreds. Um, April 26th is the spring community tag sale. May 3rd is the kids stuff exchange and um, BRP, which you now I don't remember what that is. Do you know the BRP? Bulky Rigid Plastics. Thank you. Bulky Rigid Plastics Collection. May 10th. What, what day was that? Uh, May 3rd. May 3rd. And yes. it's Kids Stuff Exchange and Bulky Plastics? That's correct. Is this online? It, it is online on Facebook page and stuff like this, but we were not able to, we didn't have any money. Karen was really good at writing grants and getting money for getting this out on a postcard, and we have not been able to do that this year. May 10th is the collaboration with the Let's Save Our Schools plant sale, and there's a garden pot, <coughs> garden pot collection. On May 17th is the electronics collection, and that's a, a collaboration <coughs> with JFK, I believe. Then we jump to October the 11th, and there'd be a costume art swap, swap and fall community tag sale. Then in November, there's another bulky, rigid plastics and foam and paper shredding collection, okay. uh, 15th of November. And then 6th of November, there's the, again, collaboration with the Lions Club, possibly, like we did this year with the Holiday Toy Exchange and the Ski Swap. And it's the Lions Club with the Ski Swap sale. So this is the third year for most of these, and maybe more than that for some of the others. So these events, have created an expectation of reuse and sharing and um, uh, keeping, you know, it started with the concept of keeping things out of the landfill. And I, I would just like to go down the road of, I think it's more than that now, I think it's, a communi it's community building, it's the concept of sustainability. Um, and I say that partly because there was some discussion at one of our BPW meetings about possibly you said something about maybe trying to do a um, full-time solid uh, coordinator by having funds not just from the solid That's waste correct. enterprise fund, which I think is a great idea because of the aspect of sustainability that all of this does. I, I'm also going to hand out, there was a great, today, a great uh, blog on reuse, and you, can, you don't have to read it now, but um, it's for your um, use, and I think I made a copy. So, um, um, the, uh, so I'm bringing this to the table because I'm one, because now they're about ready, they're, they're going, the reuse committee is hoping to bring a proposal to the Board of Public Works sometime in, 
April, probably the 23rd, which has, again, a reuse center proposal. And I'm not quite sure, because, and they've been meeting independently of the reuse committee. There's some thoughts about funding that I, I'm not aware of or I haven't been made aware of. And um, the committee itself, they're meeting independently. They're meeting, I think, um, twice a month, maybe more. And they're, it's, it's been kicked up a notch, so to speak. And, and justifiably, they want to make sure that the board is behind them on this. And um, we will hear a formal proposal from them hopefully in April. But then, and then they're doing these events. And then the summer, they'd like to work more on the reuse. And Ned had brought to the group and has taken them on tour, I believe, of the Glendale Road facility. And they're very excited about that because they feel like they can work to um, create a good beginnings for a reuse center. Um, to be honest, I'm, I'm not really, and this is just for the board and I guess for the public, um, you know, it's, it's just a beginning. It's not, the, it's not exactly the central location, but um, uh, it is a beginning of, <coughs> it is a location, it is a place where people come from things, and it's the start of the process. So what they're asking, what the Reeves Committee wants to know is like how much the board is interested in this. Um, and how much they um, are feeling supportive of this. And I'm just really opening a conversation right now. And it might be even a bigger conversation about where we're going with our responsibilities of the transfer station in general, or the cell, we know we have to have the cell with enterprise fund, if I'm calling this correctly, to cover our cost for the land for, in, for a while. But you know, do we want to, you know, there's some other issues there as well. So, um, so I'm opening that up for discussion. Did, 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 how did the mayor respond? No. I haven't had that meeting yet. Oh. He had one meeting and the mayor wasn't too interested. <coughs> That's correct. But you haven't had the second, second one. One of my customers is on this committee. She's moved up here from New York City area. And it's kind of cool. She got, um, for example, all of the window displays from Macy's, the Christmas window displays, moved through this reuse center. Uh, leftovers, remnants, I guess you call them, from the garment district would go through the center. And she was out there digging up stuff that was kind of cool. I, we don't have Macy's or the garment district, but, you know, you'd love to see her have a crack at uh, Hampshire County and see what could be uh, developed. She was uh, the significant person in running the um, art swap event. Mm -hmm. So both artists as would come and show their stuff as well as bring buttons, materials, stuff that other people might be interested in. And so that became a, that was sort of, it will be, it's happened twice. And so it hopefully happen this fall again. So a discussion, <coughs> the, the kind of policy discussion that we should have is, if, not tonight maybe, but I, I see this as being a coming discussion we should probably have, is, is there some money in the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund to support this idea for materials, paint, whatever? Um, and long term, there's this other discussion <coughs> Clearly, we're losing money next door. Um, and where's that going? What's the what's the plan? We have we have a cushion of money in the solid waste enterprise fund, so it's not going to bankrupt us if we lose money for say the rest of this year. But it's just moving forward, is that the plan? That we'll just lose money until we run out of money, and then we'll. I mean, it doesn't seem like a, much of a plan. Um, <coughs> just speaking for myself, the, the, the efforts that, that Roe is describing seem in a way more valuable for the community than having a, a money losing place to drop off bags of trash. But people might differ on that. I, it's just it'd be a good discussion. 
not for time. Well, I agree that it's a, a necessary discussion. And we knew it that is. we were going to have this discussion, or need to have this discussion, and we were waiting for data to see what, how it was performing. I think we've got, you know, an, an early indicator of how things are going. And there and I don't know. I was I was thinking like an economist. It's we had talked about if we raise the cost of the stickers for cars, if we raise the cost of bags, at what point will the participation that we have in the local street transfer station completely have you know, that those increase in costs won't generate enough revenue to really take us to a zero bottom line. So it's like, is that a legal <coughs> battle? Is that, are we going to be doing transfer station work for the purposes of providing a community resource? Or is it just something we, I mean, we have other resources in the community. There's private haulers, there's do so. There are other resources, so it's not like our community doesn't have any other source. And the city made a uh, policy decision a couple of years ago to go to not have a city white hauler. So, um, since having private, having a transfer station, having just one transfer station, we were hoping to consolidate on the efforts in the, in the uh, uh, operations so that we would have a budget that would be um, more revenues would cover expenses, but that's not happening. As as part of the budgeting process, is staff going to take a look at the, the the whole revenue expense issue regarding the transfer station. I, I mean, I'd look to see what that looks like. Yeah. Because, but I do think we need to start thinking about whether or not we should be in the trash business. I mean, if, if we can't compete against a lower cost option, then. Um, then maybe we don't belong doing it. And, and certainly $60,000 a year is a lot of money to lose for some intangible benefit that we're providing to the community. And I, and I, and I do think it's a benefit, but it's, I'm not sure, I mean, with all the expenses we face, I'm not sure we can afford that. There's really no silver bullet when we look at the budget. Uh, I, the, I don't expect there is. Yeah. But is it fair to assume that when you come up to when you propose next year's budget, it won't have a structural deficit built into it? Well, it shouldn't if I had anything to do with it. But, you know, and the options are the general fund infusion, which Ned is going to talk to the mayor about, um, and we have justified reasons to quantify. If someone asks the mayor, well, how come the general fund is contributing certain aspects? We could describe the services and the, the costs associated with that. So that's part of the discussion. And then the revenue side, of course, is the other part of the discussion, which we, we talked about and you mentioned. You know, you raise the vehicle permit fee, you raise the bag fees, and what is ultimately the impact of those, those particular actions? Um, and are there any other ways to economize on, on expenditures? Um, but there's not, you know, there's not a lot, not a lot that can be done. Um, <coughs> Dick has offered to help do some research for us so we can sell all our recyclables for millions of dollars to make a little bit more. Well, well help fill that structure. The contract deficit, right? is a killer now. We can do yeah. work on pushing deeper up there. Right. But, um, but that would be the idea to, to present a budget, right? That okay. it's balanced and you don't want to move forward otherwise. Yeah, okay. And we'll see that next month. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, you know, we've seen the writing on the wall for this for a long time. We knew that the so we closed down the landfill, we lost the revenue stream that really subsidized the transfer station that we all know and love. And <coughs> yeah, I agree. We don't have a name for it. Death spiral. Uh, we <laughs> <laughs> we're in the death, death spiral. In the death spiral. But you know, there were ramifications that people argued at the public um, sessions at the um, the mayor's task force about community. Mm -hmm. But I think the youth center could have that same kind mm -hmm. of community and be um, be fulfilling some of the other aspects as long as it were revenue neutral or didn't cause problems. Or might we choose to just focus on the community events, pay for them directly out of the general fund, and come to terms with the fact that the transfer station can't be self-supporting equity. Mm -hmm. 
Well, there is there is some ongoing revenue, for example, from the South Tower. So I, I think that would be, I suspect that would be an uphill struggle to get any money from the general fund. Mm -hmm. But there are other sources of money. Mm -hmm. I mean, people that use these all these great events that Ro mentioned, they're open to the entire community. Mm -hmm. You don't need a vehicle permit to use them. So if there's a lot of people that are getting that service essentially at no cost because none of their general fund taxation is being used to support these programs. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the arguments with, with the mayors. Just outlining, mm -hmm. you know, these are the services that residents are getting. The people that don't buy a vehicle permit sticker, they're getting these services at really no cost. So that's part of the, just understanding the complexity. But, um, you know, granted, there's not a lot of general fund money kicking around in there. We take in about 10000 a month, actually more than 10000 a month from the South Tower. So there's actually, a, no? Is no, it it's, about, it's about 65000 a year. Oh, 65. Yeah. Okay. That was 165. Okay, so we take in 5000 a month. But, you know, there's enough money there to fund a very nice, all sorts of community outreach efforts. And, you know, at some point, that might be possible. Uh, there wants to be public comment. Oh, yes. In all of this discussion of the stormwater fund, it's coming back to the fact that the city is off the hook now for $300,000 or more per year. Not quite that much. But Whatever it is. A, a, a some, sizable a large chunk amount. of money, yeah. which is really a bonus in the city's general fund pocket. Now, they got $2 million in an override, and they're getting another quarter of a million or more Stormwater runoff fund. I hope you're down at City Hall making these comments. I am planning to. Good. I am planning to because you know that money should come back to the community some way, either as a tax refund or as a contribution to something that benefits the community, like what you're talking about. Okay. A lot of trash is generated in this town that doesn't come from this town, <coughs> but from the. Uh, Businesses and places mm -hmm. like that, restaurants. So there is a case to be made for the general fund coughing up something. Well, help there's us make that case. We we could use the support. And there's also a case to, for the price of the cycle holes that we're sending out, and the MRF is giving us next to nothing for it. If we started marketing those ourselves, if we generated more, you can't just write that off and say, that's a given that you're going to get nothing. So any other comments on Rose presentation? So no no action required today. No action required, yeah. just informational. I've sort of been hinting at it the last few times in my go arounds and I just decided I wanted to get it to be on the table. I mm -hmm. want to get this committee not to be spinning the wheels. There's some some of the people on the committee have been working for a long time. Some are, are retired and joined the committee and I know from previous community work that they're very hard workers and and um, so we want to be ready for the And is there any prep that will be required? I mean, do we have the authority to commit a, a, some money to helping them get that space into shape? You have that option. It's, uh, it's the Solid Enterprise Fund. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Andrew. Are we still on the trash topic? Um, yes. The question about the organic ban. Or two thousand. I think it's like the two tons or more of food production or something. Yeah. Large scale or one ton. I think it's a ton. A ton. One ton. Food, food waste. Food waste. Yeah. 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 And that's being excluded from landfills. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, I think our compost. Our little the thing. The compost piece of this people really. Enjoy, especially in the winter months. Very good. Okay. Thanks. Well, I'm just, I miss you. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, okay, Pulaski Park. Uh, just briefly on this, at the last meeting, I, I had, uh, made a statement of scheduling dates for public presentations, and um, since that time, I received a note from Stimson Associates that um, Stephen Stimson, who would be the lead landscape architect on the project, had an unexpected 
death in the family, and he's asked me to reschedule some of those dates. So I'm working with BJ right now to come up with new dates for those public meetings, and as soon as I know what they are, I'll let you know. Um, Will they be less possible to be made now? The first one we're shooting to have on April 26th. So the last two dates, uh, uh, 24th, okay. whatever, whatever the... Saturday. Yeah, that one. <laughs> that, that one. First one, maybe that one. But when I get the other dates, I'll let everybody know. Okay. And there'll be a flyer, as I mentioned, once I know the dates. Yeah. And you'll get the flyer. That's all I really have on that. Okay. Private ways. Private ways. We're still moving through um, with the 34 private ways that the board has done, reviewed, and looked at, held public hearings, and so on. 27 of those have held all the research and field work done by the surveyor. 24 of those have plans complete that staff has reviewed. Uh, 19 of those have been moved to Allen Seawall to draft orders of taking uh, at this point. So hopefully in the next few months, we'll actually see City Council taking action on these. <coughs> I mean, we're, we're winding on a process. I can only imagine the next month that all the survey work will be done. And then it's a matter of moving everything to the City Solicitor's Office and the City Council. Um, not to start discussion, but I was uh, thinking about the hearing we had today, and um, I think we're going to need more help from the planning department, or or we may even, I guess one option is we could defer to the planning department. What was the hearing we had today? You know the Moose Lodge up in a Cook oh, Avenue? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't know. It's yeah. kind of, it's, there's a mm -hmm. mix of conservation land and private land right. and public land right. and it's a little bit of a hairball. Ownership is uh, slightly disputed. People are a little fuzzy about, now is that the conservation land or does that belong to the condo association? And the roadway is, has um, ambiguous ownership. So if, if we vote against it at our next meeting, don't you think it will be dead? I don't see any strength to re resurrect it. But we're, I mean, uh, we probably shouldn't have the conversation in, in advance of the night, but it seems no. like we we may wind up having to defer to the planning board. Well, they, they would have to get involved eventually anyway, mm -hmm. right? I mean, even if we approved it, they could mix it. Right then, there'd be a split recommendation going to the city council. Mike? Well, I think it would help us in our discussion if the, the planning board or the broad coalition has any expectation that we plow that so that people could park their cars and access the Fitzgerald Lake area. That's on board with that. We don't plow it. We the don't plow it. <laughs> he's, he's like this, but. <laughs> well, then that's. Then People must take advantage of the property owner plowing it. I think that's true. Yeah. Well, he, the point was made that their insurance company mandates them to plow it. When they have a tenant there. That's well, what he said tonight. I, that was, I don't, that's the way I took it, what he said today. It's all new to me, I, but it was just a comment that they made I, I, as to I why would, they were plowing it. I, I would agree that that's what I heard. They, they did say they had a tenant, but I think you're right. He said his insurance company requires them to plow it. Mm -hmm. It may not have been heard by everybody. For fire protection. For fire protection. Fire just, uh, exactly. One other thought is I do think the planning board ought to take the lead on this one. I think they have far more input into this than we do. And yeah. It doesn't really make sense for us to make a decision until we hear from them. I don't know if that's possible or not. Well, I could ask if Wayne would come to our next meeting. Let's see if that would. Hmm? Or if the planning board has made a recommendation already that we haven't seen. Not possible. Um, but still, it'd be helpful if he came. Mm -hmm. I will um, invite him invite to our next meeting. Okay. And then finally, uh, in five minutes or less, 
<laughs> next year's budget. Um, working with Anne Marie, she thought by Friday she might have enough of the budget numbers together to actually sit down with the Board of Public Works next week to go over preliminary budgets, what we're looking at for your upcoming meeting on the 26th. I got that right. Yes, it's March 26th. 26th. March 26th to start looking at budget approvals. And that way they go to the mayor's office. So that was the goal at the end of this week is trying to put the final numbers, the recommendations from the, uh, the board meeting the other day, how we wanted to pay for projects, trying to put that all together into the budget process. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Is it appropriate to s schedule early morning meetings if that's the, of an interest to the board? It is appropriate. Sure. We just have to do it in advance, 72 hours. So once I know <coughs> Friday or maybe Thursday what's going on, I can send out an email like I did last time and set up a couple days in the morning to meet. And hopefully at one of the meetings we have a quorum or everyone shows up to one of the two meetings. Okay. Can you project that you do a Wednesday and Friday again? Um, I could shoot for that. I'd have to look at the schedule here for the boardroom, but we could tentatively shoot for that. That looks good. Okay. Uh, I know that you have to do you have to schedule um, for purposes of public meeting, but and I thought that was really helpful that somebody who said that you were coming to the meeting and nobody said they were coming to Friday Sunday. The point was coming to Wednesday. I thought maybe nobody would come to Friday Sunday. So I understand, but I didn't. <laughs> but my point is, my point is, I don't my point is, is that I had this feeling that I, I, I wouldn't know. want you to have to have a meeting that you didn't have to have. So if we could all respond to that email to say which one we are we're coming to, then it might keep staff coming down. Do you want to try to agreement on a specific date to work for? <coughs> what well, he has to check with me. Okay. No, that's fine. So right now the calendar here is clear till about 10 in the morning on Wednesday and Friday next week, which would be the 19th and the 21st. What about Wednesday? Wednesday? I won't be here. Uh, I won't be here. I don't know about Wednesday. I can do Thursday. <coughs> I, Friday. I think Friday's I empty. I could do Friday. I could do Friday. Friday. So Friday the 21st? I'll be at yoga on the beach. 21st? We can Skype with Friday. That's okay. true. Yeah, you that's legal. You can join by room up because yeah. they yeah. are on it now, right? It could be Oh, I'm sorry, is that palm tree rustling too noisy? Uh, Mr. Chairman, could you get dressed, please? <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty, please? <laughs> too much information. <laughs> no FaceTime on your cell phone, okay? 21st <laughs> at what time? The 21st. I think we did read the Friday the 21st at 8 a.m. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Gary, anything else you'd like to talk about? Chris? Um, I wanted to thank the staff for the uh, capital improvements briefing. I thought it was really helpful. Um, I almost came Friday, but uh, it was, again, but it was good. Um, and I also want to um, uh, share with the, uh, the other members of the BW um, the accolades that our colleagues, um, Ned and, and Jim and, and, and Terry, got from the city council for the work that had been done on the stormwater. Uh, I think they were really appreciative uh, of the amount of time that we had put into it. Um, there were comments made about um, <coughs> how outstanding the process had been from its inception to its completion. And even though we haven't had the second vote, I have every confidence that it's it's going to happen. And uh, um, I just thought y'all, um, because uh, the work that, that they did and the work that we did was, I think, really appreciated. It will be reflected in my bonus at the end of the year. <laughs> Could you send me the solid waste budget numbers that you handed out at the previous meeting? Nothing else. Well, sir, thank you. Uh, one thing, a uh, flurry of email has gone out to the board to keep you up to date about um, questions in the community about our forestry program on the watershed plan. Um, I just wanted to let you know that uh, there, were, there was some activity today. Um, 
DPW was invited to make a presentation to the City Council next Thursday to give them an overview of what the program entails and a little summary of uh, what we're accomplishing out there. So um, at the meeting Thursday, which I will be at for the Stormwater Utility, we'll make a brief 10 or 15 minute presentation and respond to some questions that the councilors may have. So just wanted to let you know about that. Uh, oh, oh, question for that? Yes. I think uh, at this point, I would just say accolades are, are due to Jim for the great material that we've received uh, regarding this Matera and, and you and uh, Nicole. Nicole. It, it's just been amazing, yeah. the quality, the clarity of it. And it's hard to write a clear email. I mean, it takes a while. Oh, it doesn't absolutely. Work. The photo log was particularly useful for people. Yeah. Um, the mayor was receiving a lot of um, a lot of email from residents and things asking about the program and his office sent that email out. I think it's helpful for people to see photos and a description of what, what it is that we're doing and why it looks the way it does. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it seems pretty good. It provides a nice overview. If you don't want to read a 300-page stewardship plan, you can look at some pictures and get an understanding of what we're doing right now. The largest area impacted by the logging is like a third of an acre. It's not like we're just wholesale ripping down the forest. I think some of the concerns make it sound as if there's just un, uh, no boundaries to the work that's going on out there. When that's far from the case. But you did give us the stewardship plan that we read. We did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had uh, discussions with the board about the stewardship yeah. plans mm -hmm. and, and about our goals for watershed and, and that sort of thing. And obviously, the the contracts with Mike Mori, our forester, and the logging contracts, the two that we've, uh, we've signed. Uh, so we're proud of the program, actually. You know, we think we're accomplishing a lot, and we're, we're doing things in a sensitive way. So we'll bring that message to the council on Thursday so we can hear. If I could just add one other thing, the you may know that um, people have been comparing the amount we've spent preparing for logging versus the income from the logging. And it looks like we're spending scads of money to generate only small amounts of money. But a large portion of the money that was spent in advance was for a 10-year plan, which, which, of course, any one logging event is not going to recoup. Well, and I, I think I think one of the one of the points that was made in some of the briefing materials that you sent out, and I think it's actually on the website, is that any benefit that that we recoup from from the, the, the logging is ancillary that the work would be done whether or not because it's about forestry health and and it would be done whether or not uh, we were we were generating any revenue out out of the, the actual logging so anything that comes out of it I think I think that's a specious argument and I think we ought to uh, confront it as such that this is work we would do even if if there was nothing coming out of the trees and that anything we recoup from the trees is is, is a bonus is that true uh, it is true for the most part. Um, the one thing that we do do when we, when we do logging is that in order to get, we're not paying to have the logging done, right? We, sure. we The contracts come in, we compensate a logger to do <coughs> the work that we specify. The way those contracts are designed is that there has to be enough work in order to get a bid. And otherwise we would be paying for the service of having someone come do maintenance work within the forest. If you follow what mm -hmm. I'm saying, okay. So a certain amount of so I misstated it. I'm sorry. But no, but your, I mean, most of your argument is, is correct. But it's a balance between our cost and being able to get someone out there. Otherwise, we would be paying a contractor to do the types of things that we're looking to do. You know, thinning um, some of the stands and creating open areas for more light. Um, trying to enhance the growth of some of the trees that are there. Um, so it's you know it's complicated, but well thought out, I think. I would, I would suggest that we try to refrain from using the word logging as much as possible because it does convey a false image. Mm -hmm. Logging means money, but <laughs> that's not our purpose. Money is incidental. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's probably called a stewardship Yeah, it's a stewardship plan. Yeah. Yeah. But if you call it a logging plan, who wants to hear about stewardship? 
They know, walking has its own identity. I mean, the other thing is we describe in the contracts with the uh, with the logging companies um, the number of acres that the work is being done. But on any given acre, we may be cutting down two trees or three trees or just thinning. You might be you might go out after the logging is done and not really know even what happened, mm -hmm. depending on what we were doing in that area. So if you represent it that we were working in 15 acres, the immediate image is that there's 15 acres that are cleared. Yeah. But there's really no, uh, you know, we're not doing clearing of, of that type. And as Terry mentioned, I think the largest area might be a third of an acre, a half an acre that was opened up. Um, so, you know, it's you have to pay attention to the detail to really understand it. And uh, we're trying to get that detail and make it available for people. Any other questions about the forms? DJ? All good? Yep. Okay. MJ. A couple of things. First of all, I just wanted to uh, restate the uh, the praise for you guys. That everywhere I'm in the community, when I talk to people about the ceremony, basketball game over UMass last week, they are pe people are very happy with the presentation and the process. And I hope you learn, you know, learn that that's our rate. That becomes our standard and usual. Um, the second thing is, is that the Joint Committee met on Monday afternoon with some new members. We have a new member of the Joint Committee from City Council, Alicia, Elisa Klein, Klein yeah. has joined it. And uh, she had asked that we talk a little bit about calling in potholes. And we had a brief discussion, <coughs> but not to talk about it tonight, but I'd like to put it on the agenda. Uh, and I had a third point of the okay. So you'd like uh, at an upcoming meeting, we just Around with an agenda. Hopefully, before the next joint committee meeting. Okay. Could we do that? I'll put it on for the 20th of March. Okay. Do we have one other thing for that? Sure. Uh, appointments to subcommittees. <coughs> <coughs> mm. My appointment to the TPC expired on, in January. TPC. Transportation and Parking Commission. <coughs> okay. I think Ned told me to do that, but I had already posted. You didn't you already yeah. posted yeah. that's correct. Mm -hmm. I'll put it on the screen. Excellent. Good idea. Good? Yeah. All right. Done. Done. Ooh. Good for you, Mike. Two minutes to go. <laughs> <laughs> Move we adjourn. <laughs> <All right>. Oh, <laughs> quick. Oh. This is from the summary of the last week. Okay. Here's um, like Dick that. has a contract summary from that, the Merck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you, oh yeah, yeah. There's, there's. Sorry, Dick.